try this again. You know, it's funny though, I, I, I think we usually have like these huge show-stopping problems whenever I have a live stream. And that's why the, when I, the initial one I did was so, was so interesting because it just worked on the first go. All right, so we're plugged in there. Oops. Oh, hey, guess what, everybody? It's working. I think. Maybe not. Let's see. All right. We are back in business, everyone. Look at that. Okay. Let's get this show on the road here. We got some more work to do. All right. So let's get the controller plugged in. So <laughs> apparently those two OTG adapters were not created equal, which was very odd. But it looks like the hub is now lit up. I'm going to leave that OTG adapter permanently attached so that we don't run through this again. Now, the game controller is not working, but I think I've got to turn it on first, so let's see. But the good news is the hub is lit up, and I can move the menu around here, so that is good. All right. Yeah, so replacing the OTG adapter did the trick, Tim, and I'm not sure why it did, but I'll take it. So that is it. It is back up and running. So now let's see if the controller will work here. Now the controller is not working, but I'm okay with that because we're going to do some other stuff first. Okay, so, um, so what, what I thought maybe I would do, let's see if this is, okay, it is working. Good, down, up, button one. Oops. All right. There we go. All right. So let me do something real quick here. It might be kind of fun. So we'll load up the um, Turbo Graphics 16 core first. And just to show you like what you can do with this. So when you hit the button, it reprograms the FPGA to go into uh, Turbo Graphics mode. And what will happen here is I have to hit F12 to pull up a, a ROM file. Oops. Wrong button there. So I'll pull up the super graphics game here, and it will load right up. Pretty neat, right, everybody? Um, that's it. It's running. So let me pull up. Uh, now, for some reason, it's not working over my. <laughs> we'll just have to look at it on screen here. Um, let me give you some audio so you can hear it. It's going to be a little loud. Let's turn it down a little bit. Oops. I think my. Um, Let's see if we're getting the sound. There you go. So what it's doing right now is it's essentially emulating or simulating, depending on your definition, uh, the Turbo Graph or Super Graphics console, which was uh, kind of a short-lived thing. It didn't do very well, um, and there was a couple of games for it. It added some graphical enhancements over the original. And you can see it working here. And I've got my game controller out, and I can play the game. You can remap the controls if you want. Very weird that we, we had all this, all this time here trying to get this to work, but it's, uh, now it's working. So. so that is how the Mister kind of operates here. So in some ways, it's kind of like emulation, but um, you might want to go in and look at... Um, I'm going to reboot it here. Uh, you might want to go and look at the Mr. homepage because they've got a lot of good information on exactly why this is different than emulation. And I thought it was a very good definition that they have there. I'm just going to reboot here. Um, hopefully I'm not going to kill, kill my success that we've had. Okay, good. We're still, still in operation. So what I want to do real quick is actually start recording just in case my stream goes out because I was going to turn this into kind of like a video. So let me go back to my recordings here. Because I can never trust Comcast. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to do a quick explainer as to what we've got going here. And then um, we're going to go through the few things that I wanted to do today. And then I've got to run out to my mailbox and pick up some stuff for review that I'm doing tomorrow. So let's go and uh, get this show on the road here. 
Let's kill these two videos. All right. Okay, so we are finally working here. We did have an issue uh, with my mister uh, in that, for whatever reason, it didn't like any of the USB OTG adapters I used except this one. And I had an identical one uh, from the same manufacturer that it didn't like either. So it was very finicky, but I think we're uh, now functioning here as we were hoping to be functioning. So um, I wanted to just briefly explain what this is because I know some people are tuning in late. Uh, and I'm going to do a real quick explanation of this. I did do a video already on setting it up, which you'll find in the video description. Uh, so what we've got here is a basic Mr. device. It consists of a DE10 Nano FPGA board. And on top of it is a little fan uh, assembly that does some additional input devices. I bought this um, by the recommendation of Smoke Monster, who is... Uh, the, the guy to follow for this kind of uh, video because he's done a lot with this. He's been a big promoter of this project. Uh, why this is different than maybe a Raspberry Pi or something like that is that it is using a field programmable gate array processor. And what this chip allows you to do is to rebuild all the logic of the original chips that were powering all these different devices. So right now on the uh, Mr. here, let me pull up my second video uh, window. Uh, we have all of these different uh, consoles, like the Genesis and the Mac Plus and the SNES and the Turbo Graphics. So uh, I could load up, for example, the Super Nintendo here. I can hit F12 and uh, load up a, oops, I hit the wrong button here, uh, load up a ROM of like Super Mario Kart, for example. And what's happened here, the person that wrote the core that is driving all of this uh, has essentially um, recreated the Super Nintendo on this FPGA chip. And although my colors now are all messed up for some reason, I think I hit the wrong button somewhere. Um, I'm not having a good luck with this today. Um, I'm going to just disconnect the um, device I'm using to run this through here for a second. But basically what he's done is he's recreated uh, the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is very similar to what we saw with the very cool analog Super NT. And that is, of course, a device that's also powered by an FPGA chip. And I'm just disconnecting my video here for a second to get my other device hooked up. Um, and it's just a more accurate way to get things working. And if you think about preserving your software for future generations, that is something we've been seeing with the emulation community. Um, but also the hardware itself needs to be preserved. And that's what's happening here is that not only are they getting these ROM files to work, um, they're also getting these, uh, the actual hardware recreated so that you have a real accurate way of running everything the way that it was run before. And it is you know, not technically exactly the same, um, but it's pretty darn close to being exactly the same. And of course now my HDMI cable is not long enough to go to the monitor. Bear with me for one second, everybody. We just have to get my longer cable out here and we will continue our little project. So I'm beginning to find some limitations of my bird dog device and that it doesn't like video mode switching on it. So we've had a reboot. So we're gonna hook up the uh, new tech spark, which is much more amenable to that sort of thing. So let me just get this going in here. And we'll reconnect up here and get going. So we've got the cable coming out of the mister. We're gonna pop that in here. And we're gonna grab this one and plug it into the monitor. I recently upgraded my network switch here. So we saw that video we did on the 10G stuff. Well, I have now also put in a, a larger uh, gigabit switch just to handle all the stuff. Every wall in my studio has four inputs on it. And that uh, is a big, a big deal because I can do a lot of this NDI stuff now, which is so much more convenient for me. All right. Now I can show you this. There we go. So basically the Mister is a means of rec replicating all of this classic hardware uh, and then running the classic software on that classic hardware. 
And as you can see right now, it's doing a little demo of the Super Nintendo, but I could go over to my F12 menu here and just go over to the right here and switch my core and I can just go boom. And now I've got a Sega Genesis and I can load up Afterburner 2 on the Sega Genesis, just like that. And I can get out my controller here and uh, hit the start menu, the start button and start playing Afterburner. So now we've uh, basically gone from replicating a Super Nintendo to a Sega Genesis. And it's done in a way that, again, is copying all of the timings and the logic of the chips that were on those original systems. And the FPGA chips are very parallel, which means that uh, it can do all of this stuff at the same time and it's not waiting for software to catch up. It's not having to translate hardware into software commands like you would see on an emulator. This is just hardware executing the code. Uh, one of the things Smoke Monster told me on his stream the other day is that uh, you could actually take the uh, hardware logic mappings in the software that they're using for the FPGA development and make your own chip from it if you wanted to. It's that, uh, it's that cool. So that is some of the stuff that I think an FPGA will uh, deliver for you. Now the board itself consists of a a uh, little FPGA board called the, uh, N, uh, the DE10 Nano, which is the lower portion of the board here. It's this uh, part here. Uh, connected to it right here is an SD RAM uh, card that is probably the most important thing you can get for your mister because not all of the uh, cores will run on the DE10 on their own. I think the Genesis one does and the Turbo Graphics do, but some of the other ones require a little bit more than that. Uh, and then I have a fan and a heat sink installed, and this thing on top is the I.O. module. I believe you can do uh, analog uh, video out through uh, this thing right here. So it's really a computer uh, that can become any computer you want it to be, provided somebody writes a core for it. And there's a huge community uh, coming together on this, and I'm really excited about how this is getting developed because, again, I think it's really important to preserve uh, the actual hardware and all of its original timings and logic in addition to the software. I can hit uh, F12 here and switch over to a Commodore 64, for example. I believe I have a demo on here that I can load up. Yeah, here it is, just to show you what this looks like. Um, we had this huge problem on the original stream because, oops, I forgot how to do this again. Load star 8-1, I think. Um, because we had a hard time finding the star key. <laughs> um, let me just try to get load. I was an Apple II guy, by the way, so this is all new to me. Uh, star 8-1. Somebody can maybe remind me how to do this in the, uh, in, the, in the chat here, but you get the drift as to what you can do with this. So what I wanted to do today um, is do some arcade ROM setup because that requires a little bit more effort. Uh, and also set up some of the scalers and cores and stuff to uh, the scalers and the update scripts and stuff. So that is uh, what we're looking at doing here. So I'm going to show you what is on the agenda for today. Pull up my input number seven here. Um, so you can find the DE10 Nano board at Amazon. There's also a, a website called MrAddons.com that has that uh, SD RAM card for about 35 bucks. They actually will sell you the whole kit for less than $200 if you want to get started with it. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was just look at updating the Mr. Core. And what I forgot to do was get my FTP client on here. So let me just do that real quick. Uh, I knew I was forgetting to do something before I started. Um, because you can FTP into the Mr. You could actually shut it down and pull the card out and put it back in again if you want. Um, but it's obviously easier to um, just pop in via FTP and do it that way. So I'm just going to download um, this uh, little... FTP client real quick and get that going. And while that is going, maybe somebody has a, oh, load star comma 8-1. Okay, so let's get that going while you wait. 8-1, and there we go. So now it's going to look up that. And right now we have the Mr. operating as a Commodore 64, and it's also able to essentially simulate how the, um, how the, uh, the old uh, uh, Commodore uh, floppy drive worked. What's funny about the Commodore floppy drive is it had the same processor inside as the computer. It had a 6502 inside. Um, we'll go ahead and run that while we're getting my thing going. And yes, um, uh, Matthew Landry says you can also do Samba. Yep, you could just connect over the network and do it that way too if you want. 
so you have lots of ways to get things working. And of course now my FTP client doesn't want to install that, or come on. There we go. Okay, let that go. And I will put on some, oh, the audio's going for you. You can hear what it sounds like. Now, who's at work right now? You don't have you don't have to tell me. We're, it's all actually you can, and we're all friends here, so no one's going to turn anybody in. I'm at work, but I do this for a living. But I'd love to uh, see who's uh, listening to pass the time here. Mordecai wants me to test some capture devices. I need to look at that. I have the only capture device that's like dedicated as a capture device that I own is the. Um, uh, the HD60S from uh, Elgato. Rich Trap is snowing. Steve is working. Oh, Rich is working from home. I work from home too. And it's funny, like I don't get out of the house that often because um, I just sit here working on videos all day. <laughs> so one of the things I do around uh, two or three o'clock is I go out and go to the mailbox and pick up stuff. I get um, a cup of coffee sometimes. I might do that today and I come back and finish up the workday. And tonight I have a uh, board meeting I have to go to. I'm on my local board of education, so I've got a meeting this evening, so I'm going to uh, get this stream going here. All right, so we're just almost ready with my FTP client here. I'm actually going to pop open my F12 menu just to get the IP address that's been assigned to my Mr. There it is. So 192.168.1.10. I think I should be able to connect without my username. There we go. All right. All right, we'll let that run out here for a second. So this is a Commodore 64 demo. These are usually written in uh, assembly code. Now, for some reason, I am... Does anybody know of a good FTP client for Windows? Because this thing does not seem... I used to use FileZilla, but now it's like loaded up with spyware and garbage. Let me just get my Mac and just uh, do it that way. Okay, let's kill that. I'm not, I'm not too keen on this thing. Right. And remove. I might just try to set up the Samba thing as was suggested. That might be the more efficient way to go here. Let's see if we can get that going. I'm going to reboot this real quick and just jump out and see if I can get the uh, Samba networking set up. Uh, you know what? Hang on a second. Let me... Uh, All right, you know, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go in and set up, uh, all right, WinSCP, that's what everyone's using, okay. So let's do WinSCP. All right, thank you, everybody. I've been using the Mac as my daily driver for too long, and I made the mistake of just downloading FileZilla, and I'm hoping that I don't have a bunch of crap in my computer now. Uh, let's do download WinSCP. All right. We'll be back in business here in one second, folks. <laughs> that was the one thing I forgot to do was get the uh, FTP client going on here, but we'll be ready to go with that in a second. Google installation. All right, install that. Now 
Thank you, On Air, for the kind words. Yeah, I'm using, uh, I'm using the, the Windows computer today, everybody, because um, it can link up with my TriCaster a little bit more efficiently. So we are on the Surface Go today. Usually I use the Mac for this stuff, but there's um, one, actually the other reason why is that so there's some software to run to get the arcade ROMs working that just works better in Windows. So that's why we're going to be uh, doing that in a little bit. I am, though, um, very encouraged that by my uh, stream seems to be working uh, good, uh, working well today because we've often had streaming problems with, uh, with that in the, pa in the past. So it looks like the stream is uh, working pretty well. Okay, so it looks like when SCP is installed. And let's go to our host name here, 192.168.1.110. Let's see what we get here. Oh, I forgot. I need to get a. Okay, it's uh, root and one. That's right. Okay. So, oops. Almost there, everybody. 1.110. All right. I think we're good to go. OK, so let me pull up camera 7 here. And we are connected. So what we can do now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is an update of the uh, mister itself. And apparently now you can do that without having to take the card out and reflash everything. So what we're going to do. Uh, is go over to this release file, and I'm going to follow the directions here on the setup guide. They have a great setup guide at the Mr. homepage that guides you through the entire setup process. We did that in the last video, so that should be something that should be pretty uh, quick and easy for everybody to get going with. Um, now, you can install future updates on Mr. without removing the SD card. It's done in two stages. Copy everything from the files folder of release to media fat using the FTP client. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll go over to media and go to fat, and it looks like we just copy, well, that's weird, it wants it like just on the root there, huh? Everything from the files folder to release media fat using FTP and then reboot mister. Okay, so let's grab these files here. Oh, it's not that many, okay. So we'll just grab, I guess we're gonna overwrite Linux, is that gonna work? I guess it might, let's see. So we'll just drag all these over. This might actually blow up my thing, too, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right. And we'll just say yes to all. And we'll let these files copy over, and then we'll just reboot. So that's the first step. Is I, I do think I have a, there's a newer release than what I had before. Uh, so we'll let these copy over. It's not going over very quickly, though, which is interesting. It could just be a lot of files. Yeah. Well, let's let, let, it, let it go there. So while that's copying, I will take some questions here. Yes, Matt, Matthew is our, um, who's in the last stream too. Uh, he's got some really good pointers here. Uh, there's an update script that you can use as well. And Tyler, yes, I am very glad that my OTG port isn't broken. I'm just so, it's just so weird though. This is the exact, I bought these two adapters. There was some kind of sale on Amazon and I bought like four of them at the same time. They're the same exact adapter. At least I thought they were, um, but this one apparently works better <laughs> for some reason or another. Um, so that's, hey, I'll take it, right? Uh, L2James wants to know if this could be used to make a mini server. I don't think it would be a good use of, of the hardware. Uh, you could, if you want to do a mini server, I think a, um, a Raspberry Pi is just better suited for that. Yeah, so just by comparison, we're doing about a megabyte and a half per second right now. Uh, typically, on my network, gigabit, if I'm going to the NAS device, we usually get around uh, 100 megabytes per second, just to give you a comparative there. But that's okay. We'll let that finish up, and then we'll just do a reboot and get this thing updated. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do after this is we're going to... Um, set up the auto update script because what you can do in addition to uh, updating the Mr.'s uh, system, 
uh, is you can also have the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the cores update on their own. So you can run this script and it will just update all the cores for you so you don't have to go download them and re-upload them to the mister there. So that's another thing we'll do. Um, then we'll set up the scalers and then we're going to get a couple of arcade ROMs going and then we're going to call it a day. So we'll let that finish copy in here. Get that updated. So these updates come out, it looks like every couple of weeks there's a new update to the mister underlying architecture. And mister is powered by Linux so there's actually a, an ARM processor built into the FPGA chip. It's actually a portion of the silicon. So it's got an ARM chip on it and it's got the FPGA. And that's why they recommend, and I'll pull up uh, the picture here again, uh, that's why they recommend you getting some active cooling on it. So I have a heat sink underneath this board and then the fan is drawing uh, some of the hot air away. That ARM chip, that ARM component tends to warm up a bit and some of these uh, cores might give you a little bit of heat too. So having some cooling is probably recommended just to keep it working consistently uh, especially over longer periods of time. Um, now where they're at with this is that uh, the most advanced systems that it's currently simulating is the Turbo Graphics, the Genesis, and the Super Nintendo along with a few computers. Um, over time they will add, be adding more. There's some work right now to get the uh, Neo Geo working with it. I don't think you'll see a Nintendo 64 or a Sony PlayStation on this. This is kind of a uh, I think more, at least at the moment, uh, more of a, an 80s and 90s thing. Uh, and the reason is, is that uh, these things are, you need more room on the chip in order to be able to simulate more complicated systems. So we're going to hit left shift, left control, left alt, left right. Uh, left, uh, okay. Left, left shift and left control. And left alt and right alt. All right. There we go. So we're going to do a quick reboot. And then I think I have to... Um, dial into the terminal here also to update the bootloader, it says. Now, that looks different. The, the snow on the screen is different now. <laughs> it looks, doesn't, look, doesn't look different to you on camera, I don't think. This really throws encoders through a loop, um, but I think we're good there. So I do want to get um, Putty going on here real quick so I can just uh, get the bootloader going. So let's do that real quick. Now Putty on Windows is kind of the quintessential secure shell client. So I'm just going to put that on here real quick. That was another thing I didn't do before I started. So I'll show you what Putty, oops, Putty looks like here. So I'll just grab the 64-bit version. And we'll install that real quick. They say you don't have to update the bootloader. They often don't do much to it. But since we're kind of doing the how to maintain your device kind of thing, we'll let that go through there, so, and, uh, oh, and so Matthew, Lan uh, Matt says there's somebody working on PS1, so that's good. F1 to switch the background, so let's do that real quick, we can, there we go, that looks a little bit, a little bit nicer. I kind of like the, the background, um, so you have all these different backgrounds you can use, that's pretty cool. That was Matthew's tip for us here. I like the color bars. That's awesome. It's got a nice color palette, doesn't it? Not seeing a lot of uh, deviations in the gradient there. So it's nice and smooth. Pretty cool. When I was a kid, I thought 16.8 million colors was amazing. Um, all right, so I got another tip here from Gregory Hogan about the Mr. INI. Do I have it set for 1080p? Okay, so that's another thing we're gonna do here too. So let me finish this putty thing first. And I'm, by the way, I'm doing this all for the first time here, so I do appreciate everyone's suggestions as to how to make this work better because I have not done this yet, um, any of this stuff yet. So let me load up Putty real quick here. Oops. Uh, where the heck is the Putty stuff? Putty, there we go. And I gotta look up my IP again on this thing. 68.0. One ten, and let's open. Yes. All right, so we are in now to the Linux side of the machine. So what I'm going to do now is just follow the directions and type in update boot. Okay, and I think I'm going to reboot it again, and hopefully it comes back. 
But at the rate we're going, who the heck knows? <laughs> so, all right, it did come back. It's amazing how fast this thing boots up. It's very quick. All right, so, I'm gonna, in fact, I don't know if it actually rebooted the Linux thing, but needless to say, we are updated. So, let us go now to the next stage of what I wanted to review with all of you. And actually, I think before I do that, I do want to look at my Mr. INI file. And perhaps somebody can tell me, I think this might be it, no. Uh, there's a Mr. Example. So I think what I would like to get from the chat room, um, Greg Hogan had suggested I go to the INI settings. Um, and I don't know if I have a Mr. INI, so if I do, where might it be? <laughs> so let me know, because I'm looking at the fat directory here, which is just the basic stuff there. So I can maybe jump back a directory here. I'm not sure where it stores that, that stuff. And what is neat, though, is that it sees um, all of, oh, there goes my FTP client, uh, is that it sees all of the, um, all of the USB ports. And it looks like I don't have a Mr. INI file because I haven't added one. So let's take a look at the example file that's on there. So let me go back to my screen here so you can see what I'm doing. And let's load that up real quick. All right, so let's back out and we'll go over to media and fat. So I'm guessing there's a, this example one is what we're looking for. So I'm going to right click on this guy here and edit with the internal editor. All right. Aha. Okay. So we probably want to do 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. So I'll select that. So I think by default, right, it's doing, um, it's doing 720p. And do I need to do anything else besides that? So why don't you ask, uh, why don't you tell me in the chat window there? And there's a Mr. Updater. Yeah, that's the next thing. I've got a link to um, some other stuff we're going to do in a second here. Maybe the updater I'm looking at is just the core updater. So Matthew says there's actually a script that will do what we just did for us so we don't have to go through that whole um, process. But uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And I'm just going to wait for the answer on the um, thing there. So you select from video mode. OK, so let's go back to the example here. And I'm just going to save this, and it's going to re-upload it to the Mr. And I think I just need to call this uh, Mr. INI, just kind of rename that file. And hopefully the screen will come back up at 1080p. All right. So let's do a reboot. All right, it is back up. Now what I don't know is exactly what resolution I am at. Oh, I need to say video mode equals eight. Okay, so I've got to go back in there and do it differently. So let's go back in here and right click. It's great to have this uh, support as, as we're going here. So, um, Video mode eight, got it. So that was what I did wrong. So this is not what you're supposed to do. This is just uh, commented out for your information. So let's go, I have three keyboards in front of me and I keep hitting the wrong keyboard. So we'll say video mode eight. Am I right about that or I have to actually do, let me see what, uh, what he said. Okay, <laughs> I broke the INI file. Um, Video mode equals eight. Got it. All right, that's what we're going to do. So I think now we're good. Video mode equals eight. And we're going to save it. And that's going to re-upload it to our FTP server. So let's try that and do a reboot. Ah, that looks much cleaner. I don't know if you'll know the difference, given that you're looking at this through the lousy bit rate that I am sending you. But it looks cleaner to me. Let's take a look real quick at uh, this boot up. I haven't done this, the uh, scalers yet, but I was just curious to see how, uh, how it looks now. Because apparently I was running at 720p the whole time. So let's go F12. Oops. And we'll go back to... So it's funny about this game. I talked about this on the last um, stream that I did. 
When I was a kid, I had a cable access TV show, and if you go back in my channel, you can find a clip from it. And I was covering video games, and there was a store called the Ultimate Game Club that was um, in the town next over from me, but they were advertising in all the major video game magazines, and they would get all this cool import stuff from, uh, from Japan. And one of the things they had was a super graphics, and this was like 1989, my gosh, 30 years ago. Um, and so there was not this level of parallax scrolling yet on the Genesis, so this was like really like a, just an amazing game. And I, was, I actually have VHS footage of me capturing uh, this game on a, on a camcorder, <laughs> of all things. I used to plug the super graphics right into the camcorder with a splitter. Um, and that's why I keep going back to this, because it just was something I thought was wicked cool 30 years ago. All right, so let me pull up uh, our FTP client here. I think I did it right this time, guys. All right, so now we're going to, let me uh, kill this again. And what I'm going to do now is go over to um, my notes. And we're going to go to our next thing, which is the auto update script. And I put a link to it here. And this is by Locutus of Borg. And what this script does is it updates all the Mr. Cores. Actually, this is what they were just talking about. Um, and the menu and everything else. So you can just run this occasionally, and it will go out and download everything and update it. So we're going to do that real quick. So now, And this, there's a trick, by the way, to downloading these scripts, because um, these scripts, unlike a binary executable program, uh, are ASCII text, and the way GitHub gives you the scripts, you have to download in a certain way. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Um, so here we've got the updater script for Mr. And I'm just going to read the instructions real quick. So this script updates all Mr. Cores. Simply put update.sh on your SD card and launch it through the Mr. Main menu. Okay, so we're going to grab updater.sh. And I think there's a separate one for the Mr. Updater. That's what that is. We're going to do just the Updater one for now, and the other one we'll do a little bit later. So if I click on this, by the way, um, you'll see here we've got you know, essentially formatted HTML. Now, you could go out and copy and paste this into, a, you know, into Nano or something. But if you, uh, what I found, if you go onto Raw here and just right-click and go to Save um, Link As, and I'll throw this on my Downloads folder, uh, it'll actually download the shell script for you, and then you're good to go. So let's go back to, um, oops, no, I'll come back to that later. Uh, we'll grab that. We'll go over to my downloads folder. And we've got update.sh right here. And we'll just drag that in here. And I think if we go, and this might take a minute or two to run, as I was watching Smoke Monster do it the other day, and it took him a while. Uh, so if we hit F12 and go to scripts, and there's update, which we just downloaded. And now, okay, so it's actually downloading the Mr. Updater at .sh. And now it's doing its thing. So it's updating the menu. And I think it's actually going to grab, because I didn't configure this, so it's going to grab <laughs> all of the uh, cores. So we may end up with a few more cores than we started with here. I may cancel this, but this gives you an idea as to what this does. Uh, AO486 is the 486 simulator. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing around with that soon, actually, um, to see how that works. And there we go. So that is how the updater works. And what it starts to do also is sort everything out by category here. So I've got a folder for computers. This is good. I'm going to run this later and get, get all that going. But you get the, you get the idea as to how um, that works rather than... Uh, just watching it do that for a while. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go over to um, the scalers and set those up. So we're going to do that real quick here. So we're going to click on this. And, but you can see really, you know, when your OTG adapter works, just how easy this is. I mean, you really can get, as we found when I did it the first time, uh, you're up and running in less than an hour with this. It's really not a hard thing. And that's a real credit to the people that are developing for this platform. This community is just wonderful because this is, this is not easy stuff. I mean, what's going on inside of that mister is incredibly complicated, even for these old computers. All right, so we're going to download filters 2019-0216. 
and place the, the filters folder from the newest release's zip file onto your SD card. Technically, you should also be able to place the zip file into the filters folder on your SD card because newer versions of Mr. Support. Let's try that. Why not? So now because this is a zip file, um, we can just click on the file here and it should download. You always want to look for the most recent one and they keep older versions up too in case something goes awry or maybe you like the old one. And I'm just going to go here and click download. It's only 30K. And let's see, is there a filters folder? There is not. So I'm going to make a filters folder and get that going. Where's the make? There's new folder. Okay. I'm going to call directory. I'm going to call this filters. And go in there. And then we're going to just drag that file over. See if it works with that. All right. So now let's go back to the instructions. All right. Place the filters folder from the newest release's zip file into your SD card. Da, da, da. Once you have the misters uh, installed, okay, start a supported core. All right, so let's go back out. And I think what I might want to do is grab the Game Boy core because that core might be a fun way to look at simulating some stuff. So let's go to the console cores and we'll go to Game Boy, Game Boy Color. Now if I let that script run it would eventually get that Game Boy core and drop it in the folder but we're just going to speed this up a little bit. I'm, I'm going to have that run after I finish the, uh, the stream to get all my cores up to date. Because what's cool about that script is that it will grab everything and give you everything that's available. And I'm guessing as they update the script, it will update the cores that you have available to you as well. So you could really flesh out your device pretty quickly by clicking that script and just letting it rip. So we'll grab this one real quick. This is the Game Boy Core. And we're just going to copy that into our root directory here. And I'm going to go back and check the chat window real quick to make sure I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> what's great about all you helping me out uh, is that you are keeping an eye on things here. Um, Commodore wants to know if I got any super chats. I did. In fact, uh, da, uh, Runa, Runalbane uh, gave me two bucks for aspirin when we were dealing with the OTG problem there. So I appreciate all the support. I just do this uh, out of love of technology, though. I really do enjoy playing around with new things. And this is certainly a new thing. Um, so let me go back over to the Mr. screen here. That is uh, camera five. And let's back into this and just back out again. And there is the Game Boy. Now what I have to do first though, everybody, is I've got to put a Game Boy ROM on here. So let me go find a Game Boy ROM. This is getting a message on my phone, on my watch. Um, let's see, let's go over to here. And I'm just going to go browse around on my network for a Game Boy ROM. I'm going to try to do a Game Boy Color ROM just so that we can get the full effect here. Oops. All right, I'm going to go over to my emulators and my Game Boy, oh, I have a whole Game Boy Color folder. Perfect. All right, so maybe I'll grab uh, Let's see. I'm trying to find a good one that we can play on here. All right, somebody give me a give me a Game Boy ROM to Game Boy Color ROM. I will wait for your suggestions here. So let's go to camera seven. Oh, we need the Game Boy Color BIOS too. Okay, so we got to find that real quick. I'm pretty sure I've got a Game Boy Color BIOS. Um, I will browse around for that real quick and see if I have one. So let me go back over to me and take a look inside my secret directory here. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff you got to be, you got to have for these things, but we'll get it all. We'll get it all. Let's see if I have the BIOS on here. I have Bionic Commando. <laughs> But no BIOS. Let's see. Maybe it's, oh, there it is. I do have a Game Boy BIOS. Okay. So I need to go look at that instruction then real quick on the Game Boy Mr. thing because I need to know what that file needs to be called and where it needs to be placed. So let's go place the Game Boy Color BIOS boot ROM into the 
Game Boy folder and name it Boot One ROM. Okay. So I'm going to grab that off of my thing here. Put that in there. And let's see what people want to do for, for games. Zelda, Leisure, Leisure Suit Larry's on the Game Boy? I don't want to get um, demonetized. Um, let's see. All right. Let's, let's get that BIOS going first. So I've got that in my downloads folder. All right, there, go to downloads. All right, so we're gonna name this BIOS, which I have in a zip file. I'm just going to extract that here. And we're gonna call this Boot One ROM is what they want to call that. All right, so we'll call it Boot One. Boot One. Not ROM. Let me get rid of that part there. Okay, so now we got that done, and we're going to now it's got to be in a special folder. I think BIOS Boot ROM into the Game Boy folder and rename it Boot One ROM. I guess. Okay, Game Boy folder. Okay, so let's create a Game Boy folder. And we'll go new directory. And yes, my directory is becoming a mess already, but that's okay. Oh, I lost my connection. Probably because I rebooted, so let's go 110. One, All right, there we go. So we're gonna create a Game Boy folder. Media. That. And we'll do new directory, Game Boy. And we'll go into there. And we'll drop in that boot file. Hopefully that ROM works. We'll know real quick, actually, if it does, because we will boot it up real quick here. So let's go over to the Mister. And we're going to go to Game Boy Color. And let's reset it and see if it gives us anything. That's not a good sign, because I would expect to get something. Unless maybe I have to have a cartridge installed there. So let's grab a game real quick. Sorry, everybody. But this is the process. I think it's kind of good to see what the process is to get one of these things working. So let me go to Game Boy Color. And let's grab, uh, oh, I got 1942. Let's grab that one, because I just know that game. It's fine, I didn't do much with the Game Boy Color back in its time, but. All right, so let's put that on there real quick. All right, so we have a GBC file. I'm gonna drop that in the Game Boy folder. Hopefully it'll work. This is a Game Boy Color ROM, so let's see if that works. So we'll hit F12. And apparently I've got a bad ROM. <laughs> so let us then just use the regular Game Boy and just uh, prevent this from becoming something where I gotta go hunt around for a, a ROM. So we're gonna go just take a look at, I'm gonna just put uh, Mario. Oops, I'm in the wrong thing. Let's go uh, Game Boy. Yeah, the key is finding the right BIOSes and stuff for this, this thing to make it work right. So let's go Mario. I loved the Game Boy. It was such a good system. What was amazing about it was that before the Game Boy, you had those Tiger Electronics things, and that was it. I'm just looking for the right file. Here we go, Super Mario Land. All right, so let's just grab that and we'll throw it in that Game Boy folder. And hopefully we don't need a BIOS for Super Mario Land, let's see. There we go. All right. And now, while that's going there, um, we're gonna take a look at the, we can change the palette. You can do like a custom palette and you can load up um, 
palettes for that. Um, let's just keep it grayscale. What I wanted to do was go over to, there we go. Okay, it looks like it didn't unzip that file. So let me just unzip that now and put it back in that filters thing. And it might give us a better option here. So let's go back over to downloads and I'll see if anybody has some comments here. I've been not able to watch the comment stream. All right, so let's go back over to um, that filters file. So let me go back to the downloads folder real quick here. Yeah, apparently the Game Boy Color ROM I have is not a good one. <laughs> so we'll come back to that. And I'm just going to extract this filters file here. And we'll pop those filters in that filters directory and then we can see what some of those do. It might be hard to see the effect of these filters given the lower quality of the stream that I'm doing here. So we'll have to just see how it plays out, but we'll give it a shot. All right. And that was really like the last thing I wanted to do today. Well, we'll do the, the arcade cores next too, and then we'll be done for the day. So let me just delete this. I still have some more work to do today, folks. I've got to do, I got to get some things ready. I've got I'm trying to get uh, ahead on next week's content because I'm going to be out a couple of days. So I have, um, I'm going to be doing some testimony at the state capitol about some education things that I've been working on. Okay, so let's go back over to here. And we're going to go to leave on grayscale. Um, and I'm going to go over to, where did it go? System auto. Okay, there we go. Um, let me go to scale filter custom. Oh, here we go. So now there are a bunch of these different things. Now they have one called LCD effect, and I was watching Smoke Monster uh, play around with these. And let me get the right camera up here. And I'm not sure what you're going to see here, but let's see what happens. So you can see you've got like these uh, little pixels that'll pop up, which will give it more of a, of a look. And they have different ones that do different things. So you can kind of play around with it and get the one that you're looking for the best. They've got some that introduced some degree of blur with them also. Um, so this one actually looks pretty legit. Let's try like blur four. That's kind of neat. Um, so you can, you can kind of muddy up the image. And I think actually if you're, if you're looking at, you know, some handhelds, oops, I hit the wrong thing here. Um, button remap, oops. Right, left. Down, up, A, B, select, start. Okay, there we go. Um, you can kind of play around with these and get you know the look that you're looking for specifically. But I think for these handheld systems, um, it's kind of fun to, to to have them look like this. It looks it looks pretty cool. I've got a little bit of lag on here just just given the monitor I'm working with, so I haven't really done a full lag test on this yet. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, Mordecai, yes, you're absolutely correct. The script would do a lot of this stuff for us. Um, but I, I didn't want to have the script run and just see what, uh, wait for it to finish. So I'm going to run that script when I'm done and just kind of load up everything and get going there. So cool stuff. Let's get our one up. I loved this game when it came out. It was so awesome to have like a Mario game that you could play on the road. Cool beans. So that's some of the things you can do with that. Um, what I can do now, let's go back over to the SNES core and we'll look at some of the other options for these filters. So we'll go pull up SNES and we'll just pull up that Mario Kart again. Now right now the filters are off. And if I F12 again here and we'll go over to the scale filter, we can switch that to custom and we can pick another one. Now what the one that Smoke Monster likes the best is Gaussian Sharp 5, I believe, which adds just a little bit of um, like a Gaussian blur, I guess. Part of it is you want to try to reduce the shimmering and I think Gaussian Sharp 5 is the one everybody was talking about. But you can do uh, scan lines, it's like a nearest neighbor scan line thing and you can kind of find the one that works. And these are all maintained by the community. or you can do nearest neighbor, which I guess does the, the greatest amount of, of shimmer, from what I understand. 
Granted, I am not an expert yet on Mr. Let me clear that out. It looks pretty good. And you can kind of play around with it and see what, what works best for you. So one of the things Gregory Hogan here is suggesting is that you don't use the Gaussian sharp ones because they use nearest neighbor vertical scaling. That's bad unless you're using integer scaling. Smoke Monster gets that wrong, he says, but it's important. Use the non-NN filters. So these are the ones you don't want to use, he says. So going with just the numeric ones here, I think is what he's getting at. Yeah, best is probably Gaussian sharp five, generally. And that's what seems to be like the consensus in the community is that. So I think that looks pretty nice. Nice, that's a really nice scroll. You, you know, it's not gonna be as good to you on, on camera because I'm only streaming out here at 30 FPS, but that looks nice and smooth. Very, very nice. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, next thing we are going to do today is um, we are going to now get some arcade games going. And what I have done is I have downloaded um, Burger Time, and well, I, haven't, I, I have the rounds, Burger Time and uh, what's the other one? Arkanoid. So two kind of, you know, an old, early game and a newer like 16-bit-ish game. Uh, and we have to go and grab the cores for that. Now, yes, if I was running the updater script, these would install automatically, but I just didn't want to have it just go all this time for you all. And, and I really want to keep, keep the stream interesting here. So what we're going to do uh, is just grab the, uh, the cores for each of those. So we're going to switch back over to... Got a little message here on my messenger. Um, we're going to go over to the uh, thing here. We're going to click on Burger Time. I'm just going to download the core for this one. You have instructions here too, which we're going to have to download something else for. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go over to Releases. And again, if you're running that updater script, it's just going to put this stuff in automatically for you. Um, so we're going to grab uh, Arcade Burger Time, RBF. So we'll download this. And the other thing we have to download is this 7ZA.exe. This will become apparent as to why in a second. And then we also have to grab the buildburgertime.bat. Now, because a bat file, like a, like a script, because this is kind of a DOS version of a script, uh, we need to right click. Oops, not that. <laughs> right click. Uh, I'm using my little Surface Go thing here. Sometimes it doesn't get my things registered. And we're going to download that. So what this will do is execute a batch file um, to uh, get the ROM built for Mr. So I have a folder here called Burger Time. It's going to create a new window so you can see what I'm doing. So that btime.zip is the main ROM. And not all main ROMs are the same depending on where you get them from, so you might have you might have a problem with this if you have the wrong ROM, and it will tell you that you do. Uh, so we're going to copy over that batch file, and we're going to copy over 7ZA to that Burger Time folder. So now we have the folder, the batch file, and 7ZA all together. And I'm going to load up the command prompt here. Now, I did this once before, so that is why I kind of sound like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and then I'm going to go over to Burger Time. And we got the stuff in there. So we're going to go, going to go build ROM Burger Time and just execute that batch file. This should work, actually, on the first shot. If it doesn't, then I forgot to do something. There we go. Boom. So it cre uh, created a file called a.btime.rom onto the root it wants you to copy this file that it just made onto the root of the SD card. So we're going to go over to our FTP client again, and I'm just going to copy that ROM file over. Yes, my directories are a mess, but I'm just experimenting right now. So we're going to copy this over. That's the ROM. And then we're going to copy over the um, Burger Time RBF file. All right, so both of those have been copied over. And so we have now the core and the ROM. I think we have the core and the ROM. Yeah, Arcade Burger Time, there it is. Okay, so let's go back to the mister. And I'm sure uh, some folks in the chat probably have a better way of doing what I just did, but I'm just experimenting here for now. So let's go back to here. And let's see if Burger Time loads up. 
Yeah, boom, how about that? I love when things work on the first try. And there's Galaga too. Oh yeah, there's lots of, uh, lots of games there. All right, so um, I've got to look up how to put coins into this thing. So let me go F12 real quick on the menu, aspect orientation. So you can change the aspect orientation. Right now it's vertical. Um, and I don't know, define A, B time buttons. Okay, so right, left, down, up, fire. Start one player, one. Start one player, oh, I'll skip that one. All right. And I think I have to, okay, there we go. And I'm gonna mute my audio real quick just to hear the sound. Okay, oops. So yeah, it feels, it feels great. I, I was muted the whole time. I was just talking about this game here. It feels great. Um, it feels very accurate. Uh, the, the controller feels incredibly responsive, even through this laggy thing I've got it connected with right now. So I can't wait to hook this up upstairs and see how it, how it functions, because it is super, super responsive here. It's kind of, I, I should hook up my, uh, my uh, stick, <laughs> which might give a better experience there. That is cool. All right, so that is one arcade game. Let's do one more. Um, and we're gonna do um, Arkanoid now. So I have the ROM. And let me just go over to my downloads folder, I'll clean up my folders here a bit. Get our money's worth out of the Surface Go today. Um, so on my Surface Go, I have a folder called Arkanoid, and in there, there's actually two ROMs that it wants. What's nice about these batch files that they've created is that it kind of guides you through the process in a really um, intuitive way. So if you're missing files or something's not right, it's not hard to figure out like what the problem is. Now Arkanoid is one of the newer ones. So let's go to Arkanoid. And just like before, we're gonna grab the release. And again, if you have the updater script, this stuff will automatically uh, install, at least the, uh, the thing will. Okay, so this is, again, a new one, so I'm, I'm sure we'll probably see additional releases as time goes on here. So I'm gonna download that RBF file. Um, the process of creating the ROM is a little more intricate here, so we're just gonna copy that 7ZA over from the other folder, and you know, I'll just download it here, what the heck. Um, let's download that one again. So that's the one component we need there. We need this uh, Arkanoid IPS file. So we'll grab that. And we also need uh, flips.exe, so we'll grab that. <laughs> a couple more things here. And then we also need the batch file. And then remember, we've got to do a right click on raw, save link as, and download that. Okay, so now we've got all those things, hopefully in the downloads folder. So we're gonna copy over uh, this. We're gonna just drop onto our mister to get that out of the way. So Arcade Arkanoid, put that in there. All right, so that's done. And now we're, we're going to copy uh, 7Z, the IPS file, the flips, and the batch file. We're gonna copy all of that into that Arkanoid folder here. And we're gonna go back to our command line. And once again, we're going to, where'd the rest of the files go? I think I copied them to the wrong folder. Oh, they didn't go. Huh. Try it again. So copy these files over here. There we go. And directory. Okay, so we are now going to type in build ROM Arkanoid. And I think these will work because I had some issues before with the wrong ROM, but now I think I have the right one. Done. Okay, so if this did not work, you would have seen. Um, uh, 
Okay. Uh, you would have seen an error, and it would have directed you as to what the error was. So if you get any kind of error, the chances are your ROM is bad. And MAME constantly change, or they were constantly changing how these ROMs get put together, so it wouldn't be surprising if that might be something you encounter. All right, so let's go back to, it's a little hard to navigate on this little tiny device. All right, we're just going to copy that ROM over. Just like before, it created a single ROM file. And let that copy. And now we're going to jump back to our mister. So pull up camera five. And we'll go over to, I'm just going to jump into this directory and back out again. Arkanoid. All right, here we go, folks. Let's see. Boom. How about that? Yeah, this is really hard with the, <laughs> with the controller. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you probably need some kind of trackball or something just to get a better feel for it. One of the things I loved about Arkanoid was the fact that you could pull up that laser beam there. And, uh, but you see how easy this is? I mean, this was not hard. I mean, if you get all the pieces put together, the right ROM files, you're, you know, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, I wonder if I could play this with the mouse. Let's see. I think I mapped everything differently. But let's see if I can use the mouse with this. Oh, I can use it with the mouse. Okay, so now let me switch over my other camera. Oops, I have my track. This is probably not ideal either, <laughs> but yeah, I think we definitely want to get a trackball. Too bad that old Apple II trackball back there doesn't work with this. But pretty cool. A regular mouse would probably work pretty well with it too. So that is that. So I am pretty happy with um, how all of this is working. My only concern is I just don't know why that... Um, why that OTG cable is so problematic. It's weird, because again, this is the same exact manufacturer and, and SKU uh, that we have with the other thing, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't working before. So I'm gonna have to, I'm just gonna leave that permanently attached. Um, but if you run into USB issues, um, getting, uh, getting a good OTG cable is important, and maybe we can uh, look around on the forums and see if they recommend one for that. Um, so that is that. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I'll stick around for a few more minutes for questions. I have to run out in a minute to go get some stuff out of the mailbox. Um, let me go back through as I missed a lot of chats here. Um, Bean with Bacon wants to know if anyone's tried Galaga. I have not tried Galaga yet, um, but I will. I'm really impressed with how these arcade cores feel, though. It's really, really good stuff. Um, Spectre Scully wants to know if you could use this to develop new games for old systems. You probably could. I mean, it, it, you know, I would bet you if you developed a game for like the NES or the SNES and you wanted it to run on real hardware, uh, using something like this would probably validate that it would run, although you could just as easily get a flash cartridge and just run it over to a real NES or something. Um, so that's definitely something you could do. Cool stuff. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta find myself a better Game Boy Color ROM now. Um, let me go look at that. Uh, let's go run up Arkanoid one more time. I wanna put one of those filters on it and see how it works. So we'll go to custom and we'll do Gaussian Sharp 5 maybe. That seems to be the one everybody likes, Gaussian Sharp 5. And you can tell me how it looks. It might be really hard to tell the difference I think it looks pretty nice. I'm sitting pretty close to the monitor here, too. So I'm actually really excited to hook this up to... Um... Oh, it's vertical scan lines, too. That's interesting, right? Because if you had one of those... 
monitors in that orientation. So let's try that real quick. So, yeah, I'm doing okay with the trackpad now. Of course, now my, my thing is huge, so oops, there we go. So let's look at the vertical scan lines. Oh, there's actually more things in here. You have different sound chips you can choose. Oh, look at that. You can switch, switch sound modes. Let's look up the uh, vertical scan lines now. Let's try those out real quick. There's so many different like things to toggle and play with. I'm, I'm uh, getting distracted. Normal scan lines, vertical scan lines. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks pretty cool. Very neat. And some of these get darker than others. Uh, Smoke Monster was doing kind of going through all these the other day on his channel, playing around with it. There's like some thinner lines that might be harder to see. That's cool. I think those those make these make a lot of sense on like handheld systems like the Game Gear and the Game Boy and stuff. And um, and actually the vertical scan lines for some of these arcade games where they oriented the screens in the vertical position, I think will give you a very accurate uh, kind of representation, especially when you have a game like this one. Very cool. All right. Well, everybody, I need to get moving here. But I appreciate everyone tuning in and watching all of the struggles <laughs> that we went through to get this working. Um, it's always fun to troubleshoot. It's actually, I actually enjoy troubleshooting on a live stream because you often have ideas that I wasn't thinking about and uh, get us all working. But the, the issue that we had as a recap was the OTG cable, which I'm again going to leave attached to this thing permanently. Uh, and uh, I think our mister is uh, getting close to complete. My next step is going to be, I'm going to run that updater and get everything organized more properly. Uh, and then it will update with the cores automatically as they uh, get released there. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, this is going to um, get, uh, I'm going to drop this one into circulation on, as a subscription thing uh, on the subscription feed uh, next week. So you'll be able to share this with friends and whatnot as well. So that is gonna do it for now. I wanna thank you all for uh, tuning in. And uh, if you have things that you want me to check out, uh, you can email me, lon at lon.tv, uh, or you can go to the Facebook group and chat a little bit in there too. And I wanna get um, Smoke Monster on soon to talk more about this technology and some of the things that he's doing to help promote it. Um, so uh, give me some ideas for that as well. And uh, Matt says there's lots of updates on the weekends, so I will definitely be playing around with this a little bit more this weekend, too. So that is going to do it for now, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'm going to uh, just go over to my control panel for the streaming box that I use here and log out here in a second, but I greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the super chat, uh, D.A. Rune Albane, <laughs> for the... Uh, aspirin, that money will go towards the coffee I'm going to pick up right now to uh, wrap up my afternoon. And again, I want to thank everybody for their support and helping me out here as we were working through some stuff on our little Mr. device. So we'll see you all soon, and uh, thank you once again for tuning in.